Uh, today I would like to tell something about technologies for anti-fouling, anti-corrosion and MIG protection. As we all know, there are two major uh, environmental challenges in the maritime environment. That's corrosion, where uh, in the end the structure is totally de destroyed, and fouling, which leads to increase of fuel cost and destruction of the stru structure. There are many causes of wear deterioration of materials. The main one is abrasion, which can be subdivided in corrosion, wear and fatigue. Sometimes overstress and aging occur. If one looks to corrosion, the key factors influencing corrosion are chemical, microbiological and electrochemical. What is corrosion? Corrosion is mainly a physical interaction between the metal and its environment. It changes the metal's properties, leading to a functional impairment of the metal. That, in the end, leads to a failure of the structure. There are many corrosion types. For example, uniform surface corrosion, pitting corrosion, crevice corrosion, contact corrosion and intergranular corrosion. These are the head categories. All in all, there are 37 categories of corrosion, of which MIG is only one. So when you are designing a product, you need to take into account all kinds of corrosions. The corrosion rate is influenced by pH, temperature, microorganisms, type of metal, metal properties, presence of surface films, and mechanical properties, stresses. And one of uh, the most severe corrosion takes place the, in the coastal and offshore areas with high salt pollution. This is called corrosion class 5M. On average, the loss of carbon steel in the first year is 80 to 200 microns per annum. However, there is an extreme corrosion in the tidal zone. There's not a corrosion in, in microns, but in millimeters. Below you see an example of a uh, mooring post in a harbor in the south of the Netherlands. Those were designed for a lifetime of 20 years. And after three years they got problems and one of the posts broke off. Investigations carried out by TNO told, uh, showed that this was a very severe case of MIG. Of uh, you have to realize that biofouling and corrosion phenomena are very heavily related to each other and that under the fouling all kinds of corrosions occur. Uh, one of the extreme cases is accelerated low water corrosion, which is basically a combination of corrosion and fouling resulting in MIG. Uh, the possible causes in increase are the quality of seawater in the harbors, the water has been come much clearer during the last uh, years and the age of the major part of the maritime infrastructure. Sometimes we're talking about structures that are more than 80 years old. Until now, ports remain unsure about potential solutions and sometimes just deny the problem. If you look at corrosion protection, you have two, so, uh, two types, the active one and the passive uh, corrosion protection. The active has two components, that's design of construction and intervention in the corrosion process. And the passive one is basically cre creating a barrier between the substrate and the environment. This is being done by tapes or application of coatings. Passive co corrosion protection is about uh, making a barrier between the metal and the environment. There are many technical preconditions for a corrosion layer and those are that the protection layer has to be pore free, adhere firmly to the base material, resistant to external mechanical stress, possess a certain ductility and is corrosion resistant. Especially the creation of pores is very important because through a pore the water and the dissolved salts can reach the, the surface of the substrate, thus causing serious corrosion problems. Active corrosion protection is mostly uh, cathodic pot, uh, corrosion protection. 
there are two uh, ways to do this. The first one is that you attach a zinc anode on the surface. In this process, the more, uh, the more ignoble metal, the sacrificial anode of zinc, will be dissolved while the steel, as cathode, will not be attacked. Active corrosion protection is impressed current. This is mainly used in ships. And basically what you do there is to increase the potential of the surface, thus reducing the electrochemical reactions. If you look at biofouling, it's very, uh, very clear that it starts with uh, the addition of uh, bacteria on the surface, the so-called biofilm formation, and then fo followed by the soft foulers and the hard foulers. If you can interfere somewhere in this fouling process, then you can possibly avoid fouling of structures. Currently, most of the time, coatings are being used. The so-called biocidal coatings, the biocide-free coatings, and some other techniques like ultrasone, which are not yet commercial, commercially available. A biocide anti-fouling coating the main principle of this is uh, the release of biocides into the environment by diffusion and dissolution, thus poisoning uh, the marine life. The other one is filing release coatings. Those are biocid fry but have a very hydrophobe surface to which the, the organisms do not attach. Anti-corrosion and anti-fouling uh, coatings have very different design parameters and at this moment these parameters are not compatible with each other. At the moment this is uh, being solved by using three or more coating layers, primer, anti-corrosive and anti-fouling. So it's possible to have a good corrosion protection. There are many possibilities for fouling uh, protection. MIG occurs mostly on unprotected steel and is also mostly ignored. And current coating technologies for anti-fouling and anti-corrosion have such conflicting design parameters that it's not possible to have both uh, properties in one system. And you, one has to realize that when a coating is damaged, then in the damaged uh, bacterial, uh, microbiological uh, influence corrosion can occur. One of the most severe cases is the Erica, who sank on the coast before the coast of Brittany, causing a major environmental disaster. For maintenance, if you have the problem, then for maintenance there, there are some possibilities. If you have a problem with a K, then you can use divers or a mini di dry dock. For ships, you use a big dry dock. And for maintenance of offshore platforms, you use mostly rope access. Most of the methods are very time consuming and are also very, very expensive. So there is a big maritime challenge in relation to corrosion protection and fouling, and combining these to a protection which leads to corrosion protection, anti fouling, and MIG protection. Thank you very much.